Good evening, guys. Welcome to part two of Five Miniature Painting Myths. Um, welcome to the show. <laughs> In this video, I'm going to give you some of the myths that buzz around the miniature painting community. Um, now, these are not necessarily do's and don'ts, um, but more things that are being put upon a pedestal as being the answer to all your artistic mini painting issues when basically that are not on with the show. First up, you need colour theory. No, you don't. Maybe a little can be useful, um, but it's really not essential. You know, for example, there's a few different schools on colour theory. Basically, Google them like red, yellow, blue, red, green, blue, yellow school. I think there's a third school out there, but. Um, so far to my knowledge because there's a few different schools all giving you the, the kind of different opinion i don't actually mean a physical school by the way i mean schools of thought you know people who sit in certain whatever color theory trends and basically each school each train of thought each school of thought tells you its opinion on what is complementary to what um, but few actually really explain how um, and why so what i mean by that is why is green complementary to red and you could say oh it's opposite on the color wheel that's well, kind of only because we put it there but, but technically why is it yeah um, and you might say oh well it's contrasting well why is it contrasting why so first off you have to answer those questions before you can decide you know whether this is kind of a, a tool worthy of using and you know you, we go on about complementary colors um, but are you trying to tell me that it's something I should like? I should always like purple and yellow. I should always like red and green. It just seems stupid that way. So you're missing something about colour theory if that's kind of all you're given. And if you use colour theory in such a way, you're going to end up with some very gaudy colour schemes. Um, so colour theory is not necessarily essential. Um, what I prefer to use, along with a few other miniature painters out there, like uh, David Soper and Mike McVeigh, and I'm, I'm on this train of thought, is contrast. All right? I prefer to use contrast. It's an essential tool. Um, though, do still feel free to explore colour theory. It's just not essential. Um, contrast is king, basically, and it's king for a reason. The reason is, is that contrast is not an opinion like what a compliment is. Every dark has a light, every sharp has its soft, every warm has its cool, every saturated has its desaturated. It's just a fact that these things are contrasting of polar opposites of each other. Every large has a small. And when you create your paint job in that way, your paint job will have greater visual impact. For example, a white dot and a black background will have visual impact and vice versa. Why? Because they're polarized, aren't they? You know, whereas a dark gray dot on a, a black background won't have as much visual impact. And, and that really is what, what we're looking for. You know, so when you start going down these, these trains of thought, I'm gonna ask you this question. How many other types of contrasts can you identify? Um, and is another one why are you all trying to be original even using color theory how are you not just copying it's a very interesting idea isn't it um but anyway regardless of me going off on mad tangents um when you start thinking about contrast here's an example from 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 like a forum you might have seen some guy on a forum might um or a facebook page or whatever show me age here um Man, when my forums become a old school, <laughs> when did that happen? Um, some helpful soul might just decide to tell you that, hey, do you know what, you really need to push your highlights more, or oh, you really need to push your shadows more. Basically what they try to do is they try to advise you towards a greater visual impact, okay? Um, but be wary of this advice, and I'm not saying don't take it, I'm saying be wary of it. All right, as pushing lights lighter has its limits. You can only go up so far, all right? Um, and vice versa with dark, and uh, vice versa with saturations or desaturations or whatever it is. 
However, now the idea of contrast is that con contrast creates a greater visual impact by opposition. This opposition attracts the eye, okay? Um, it attracts the interest of the eye, it makes you want to know more, okay? So when trying to achieve great states of contrast, remember this, darks make your lights appear lighter. Lights make your darks appear darker, as two polarized examples. So if somebody says, push your lights lighter, maybe you actually want to put the colors around it or the shades around it darker, yeah? And that will then create a greater visual impact. Or again, or vice versa. Do you see what I mean? Or make your cool, or make your uh, colors cooler around warmer colors, etc., etc. So that is my myth number one. On to myth number two. Number two. Okay, airbrushing is better, or quicker, or more professional, or whatever. Hoo ha! All right. Now, airbrushing is one of these things touted as being um, time-saving, quality-increasing, especially in commission painting circles. Um, however, they do have their limitations and inconveniences. Limitations like um, you can only do a flat finish or a blended finish. And if you wanted to do certain other special effects, uh, that's on a miniature this big, you're going to be very limited very very limited on tanks maybe you can do masking and things like that all right then but if you're still applying flat or blended finishes over that masked area um, and while there are some great t-shirt artists out there that can create great effects um, again they don't really translate down to a miniature painting okay um, there were some like splattery ideas you can like deliberately spit paint um, and deliberately deliberately create textures with an airbrush but again this is not something common and not something generally sought after um gary from um, hot drop studios um, he has a great way of, of, of using a, sp a spitting airbrush to create speckle effects on monsters and things like that and go and see byron at element games that guy's got some great advice on how to use airbrushes for um textured techniques um having said that some of the inconveniences though are things like cleaning, ventilation, spillages and cost. Alright, now I very rarely use an airbrush and I, I think maybe I'm quite a, a successful painter now. Very much in the past I was a lot more successful maybe. You know, less active in the painting and commission painting circles now. Um, but it's even back then I still never needed an airbrush. Needed. Okay. Now. If my computer works, here we go. I scripted this, by the way. First time ever. Normally I wing it. Who knew? Now, I'm not trying. Ah. Oh. Now, I'm not trying to discourage you or, or say that airbrushes are, are crap or anything like that. Because airbrushes are great. What I'm saying is that again, you just don't need one. Um, they won't replace your lack of skill. They won't replace your lack of knowledge in brush use, um, or even airbrush use for that matter. Um, even if all of a sudden your finishes might be flatter, or your blends might be smoother, they are not yours. The airbrush has done that. And there's a lot, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot to learn. In fact, I'd say so much more to learn in, in, in actual brush work. You know, um, and also as, as a painting judge, I can't tell you how excited I feel when I see what I think is a fantastic paintbrush blend, and I'm like, oh, oh this is awesome. awesome. Just to find out that all that excitement just goes, and just deflates when I'm told, oh, actually, I did it with an airbrush. And immediately, I just, I, I lose some respect. I, I lose some awe. It's just, well, big deal. All right, oh, you've got a Ferrari, you can go dead fast. Well, no, you can't, your car can, you know. Show me that guy with legs who can just go and run fast. That guy's fast, you know, and I respect the effort put into something like that. Um, but just getting some de device to do it for you, I'm not too bothered. Um, while things like that won't necessarily take away from the theme and story, um, when it comes to skill and impressing me in those departments, it's just not going to happen with an airbrush. Um, if you want, if you want. If you want fast work, 
at a low cost, bash out an army with minimal risk, go and look at my Speed Demon Painting Challenge series. It's like, I've got like a playlist in, on, on my channel here somewhere. I don't know where it would, would be. Um, but Speed Demon, and basically I'd take you, out, I'd take you through how to paint a marine in 15 minutes. You know, I, I mean, I'm smashing it out as well to prove that I can do it in 15 minutes. And there's a bunch of other guys all trying those things. So you can kind of see where you might be at on the spectrum from like half an hour to, uh, do I do it in 10 minutes? I can't remember. Post a comment below, below and remind me. Um, but, but yeah, if you're a commission painter, learning brushwork and learning quality brushwork, I think it's, it's going to get you a lot further, a lot quicker, with a lot less overheads and a lot less risk. Airbrush brings a lot of risk. Okay, now I could go on about this a lot more. I'm sure you've got something to say about disagreeing with me because many people disagree with me on this, but that's okay. Um, sling a comment below, share the vid, go, ooh, this guy says this. I'm all right with that. Moving on to number three. Two thin coats. <laughs> Nuts. That's what I think. It's it, it's crazy to think that two thin coats is, is, is the way forward. Um, if some guy on the internet is telling you... Um, some some dogma that's binding you to a specific way of doing things when it comes to consistency um I, i'd say ignore them you know oh, unless it's me because <laughs> i'm the only one that knows what he's on about baby um you know so myths like um, oh it's got to be the consistency of milk or your paint has to be a 50 50 mix of 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 paint and water or it's two or one paint and water or two thin coats or you must use a thinner, or you must use a medium, or you must use a drying retarder. No, no, not at all. I'd, I'd always take things like that with a pinch of salt, and I bet you've heard these things. Um, but why would you take these things with, with a pinch of salt? For this reason, paint should always be prepared with the individual pot in mind. Not the colour, not the brand, the individual pot. And it should be prepared in mind with the job at hand, okay? And the surface it covers. By considering the individual pot, you automatically consider the brand and the color, okay? Once your pot has been chosen, then observe your one water input in the mix on your palette to optimize the job at hand. Um, to optimize your job at hand over the surface you're painting on, basically. Um, treat your paint like its own precious little individual all right um well why why do that well because one ancient pot of red versus one brand new pot i'm, I'm trying to find two reds on me on my thing but there's not one there so it's tough to it's um basically one brand new pot of mephist on red versus an ancient pot of, of drying up my fist on red which is about probably about a week old um <clears throat> they're not going to be watered down to the same degree you're not going to be m managing them on the palette in in with the same amounts of water you have to treat them as individuals yeah so you treat them as individuals with the surface in mind and the job you want it to do in mind and observe that on the palette okay so I've written there, treat your paint like precious little individuals of all ages, densities, viscosities, and transparencies. Um, and with practice, you'll develop a mind free to explore painting and skill to observe when things aren't right. If somebody's just gonna, gonna come along and say, you've got to do it in two thin coats, cack. If you can get an opaque coat of paint on in one coat, why wouldn't you? If you can make it smooth, consistent opaque in one coat why wouldn't you on the flip side of that if you've got say aerial yellow and a black undercoat and you're expecting to go on in two do you see what i mean you know <laughs> aerial yellow over a white undercoat bam one coat you should really be getting on in one coat maybe if you want to play it safe you can hit a two maybe three maybe four but you have to consider the individual paint at hand, yeah? It could be one coat, it could be 10 coats, it could be as many coats as is needed. It's just not two 
on to number three. Quick one this. Um, you need distilled water. Uh, no you don't. Um, you just need some water. As long as it's not junk floating around in it. Like as if you live in Norfolk or somewhere south like that. That's in the UK by the way. And they've got like weird like lime business floating around in, in the tap water. <laughs> Nobody needs that in life. Um, clear tap water is fine. Um, as is old paint more. I can't tell you. There's, there's so many top painters out there that will use it. Paint water that's like a month old and filled with all sorts. You know, it, it's just not essential. Um, there's too much fuss placed on farty little things by painters who aren't good enough and say, oh, my thinner wasn't right, or, or, or my water wasn't right. And actually, it's just them that aren't good. Um, things like that shouldn't take place of developing your skill. Um, as one of my first students, or my actual first painting student used to say, um, it's the Indian, not the arrow. And like I said earlier on, it's 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 if the car's doing the job for you, you are not fast. Well done, you just sat in a, a fast machine. You know, you might have some money or whatever. You might have been lent the car, but it, ultimately, it's not you doing that work. So stop blaming your water. Stop blaming your lack of thinner. Stop blaming your drying retarder. Yeah. Um, these are all just things being sold to you, you know. Start looking to yourself to bring your skills to the fore. Why? Well, because you want skills, I assume. That's probably why you follow me, or you admire skills. And But either way, I believe in you more than I believe in some product, some guy is trying to sell to you. Number five, models should be varnished. Um, now, I'm not so sure. While it's a good aesthetic option, it's certainly not stronger than paint. And after all, it is just paint with no colour in it. Um, and I'd certainly not ever rely on its flimsy ass pigments and molecules to protect me minis from, say, a fall or some grotty little snot nosed kids coming in and just levering up your business. Um, you really wouldn't want that whether you're at home or in a local game store or what have you. Um, now, I used to varnish my minis and I, and I still will, um, depending on what I want to do. Um, but basically, I realised I was wasting money on risk. Um, a risk in the f with, with very little reward, in fact. Um, a risk in the form of the dreaded frosty bastard. Yeah, you know, when you, you spray your model with whatever popular can is and pff, all you've got is all your color has just been fluffed up by this horrible frosty business that comes out of your can um, you, you know the stuff I mean um, or all your colors shift they either get richer or they get washed out completely you know all the all the colors drained out of them like with certain matte varnishes all you all you you, you luster gets pulled out of a uh, your metallics and things like that um, and then you know you'll, you'll go back to the shop and then you get basically told by some nerd in a shirt that oh the weather wasn't right you did it in the in temperature or you were too far away or you didn't shade the can properly or you should have hair dried it for five minutes or you should have put it in cold water for five minutes or it must have been a folly batch or whatever stupid excuses um, and I've heard them all I've heard them all why because I've done that job you know, um, and I can honestly say, as far as I can remember, I've never used any of them excuses. Yeah, because basically I just don't know. Um, but what I did find instead was a product I do have faith in, which is Boosh. Hmm. There we go. These things. Now, they still do change my colour slightly. But I've never had it go wrong. And when I do use them, I use them in a way where I anticipate the change in colours. Um, I can't remember which is which. I think one is slightly more shinier than the other. And generally, I'll use them on my nights. And I'll use them if I've been using transfers. I pick and choose my time. I don't just go like a zombie. Oh, I must varnish my models. It's not sensible. Um, it really isn't. So, um, if you want to protect your models, you're probably not, you know. If you're being careful with your models all the time, they're still going to get wear and tear on them. 
you know, I don't know anybody that has still got a, a perfect army, you know, and it is still just toy soldiers at the end of the day. So don't worry about it if it's display standard and what you're handling it for so much. Um, protect these things by uh, treating them with respect. Um, or don't worry about the damage so much if you're going to be using them and loving them. Yeah, don't worry about it. Um, what I prefer to do is if I want a nice flat finish, I'm going to use skill. Um, I'm going to manage my paint. I'm going to manage my consistency on a palette in such a way that gives me a nice flat finish. Yeah, and there are many painters out there and they're, they've got real skill. If they can make you think that their model is varnished when it isn't, that's admirable, I think. That's very admirable. So start chasing skill. That's ultimately what I make these videos all about. I'm trying to get you to, to, to invest your time and efforts in yourself instead of invest time and effort in going shopping and leaving your skill level where it is. I want you to get better and I want your shopping list to get smaller, believe it or not. So next, um, I've actually chosen a mini of the vid or maybe a painter of the video, whatever it is. My painter of this video um, is a lad called Will Paints, and you can find him um, on Instagram at Will underscore Paints. Um, and I've chosen him because um, I met him in Truro a number of years ago when I was looking after a store there, and he absolutely loved painting. And he came up to me and just introduced himself. He kind of knew what it was, Ooh, whoever I am. Um, he, he kind of knew who I was and he just he just loved painting and after I left Truro I, I carried on following him on Instagram and I really enjoyed watching his progress um, here's some of his work and I really enjoyed watching his Marius Calgar in particular um, and the guy just loves it that's all I see I just see him loving it and I enjoy seeing his progression and he just is doing it for the love of it I don't see him doing it for adoration I don't see him doing it for money though he does do commissions he's doing it because he loves it and then he gets paid he's not doing it to get paid you know um, so yeah well done will um just that so here we are at the end of the vid um thanks for watching um as usual there's a bunch of links below to my favorite brushes my instagram page if you want to book a private lesson with me um if you want to book me even maybe to come and run a course for you and a bunch of your mates wherever on the planet i don't care i'm up for it um, and if you want to uh, support me, there's maybe some links below uh, to my Patreon page and what have you. Um, or you can PayPal me if you want to donate and just support what I do. Um, as time goes on, I'm going to populate my Patreon page with, with certain things. Um, but I'm going to wait and see what you guys want from me. Because I know that what I teach and how I teach and how I present myself here is a little bit different to other people. And I'd like my content to be a little bit different. Ultimately, though, I really just want it all here for you. Um, so, there you have that. If you think that somebody would benefit from this video or any of the other videos of me, think, please like and share for me. Um, why? Because I just want you guys to succeed. Um, I think you're all awesome. So, thank you, and I'll see you next time. Over and out, guys.